What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today we are starting with the GTA 6 tutorial series. I am very very excited. So today we will begin with the base of the character's movement and the locomotion. We will start setting up the player blueprint, the input, the blend space, the animation blueprint and a head look system. This tutorial is both for beginners and intermediate developers. Remember that you have full access to the project files on Patreon or YouTube members. It is going to be a very easy video to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so the first thing that we have to do is create a new Unreal Engine project. In this case, I am going to be using the latest version, 5.3.2. And I do recommend that you use the same one as me or above. So, let's go ahead and select the third person template. Now, even though we are selecting the third person template, we are only selecting it to grab the character's mesh and skeleton. All the code will be ours and also we will import some separate animations which I will be leaving in the description. So we will only grab the mesh of this character to have something to work with until we import the metahuman. Then let's go ahead and select blueprint as this series will be purely blueprints, then the target platform which in our case will be desktop. Then the quality preset, this will depend on your hardware, in this case I will select just maximum. And then we can just deselect started content, we don't need some assets. And then ray tracing, well that depends if you want ray tracing and your hardware you know, supports it. Then let's go ahead and select a project location and let's put in a name. For example, GTA underscore tutorial underscore series. And now with that said, let's go ahead and hit create. Okay, as you can see, the project has been created and has opened up. So one thing that I always like to do when I create a new project is to anchor my content browser at the bottom of the editor. So if you don't have this already, you can just go up into Window, Content Browser, and select the first one, and then just select the main tab and just drag it to the bottom. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we are going to be deleting some unnecessary stuff. But first of all, let's go ahead and create a new blank level that we can test on. And you say, well, we already have a, you know, a test blank level, but let's just create a new one because we're going to be deleting this one. So let's go up into file, new level, basic, create. And now we have this new blank level with, you know, a player start and what we need. Now, in order to save it, what we're going to do is just move a bit the player start and then just click the reset button and move it up and now we can uh, go ahead and save the level because we modified it and now let's just right click new folder levels and let's call this one use test all right so now with that said we have this level created and we can get rid of the third person folder which contains the third person character blueprint which we will delete because we will create our own one also the input folder once again we'll create our own inputs and then, well, the third person map, which we don't need because we will have this one. So let's go to the main content folder, select the third person and press delete on your keyboard. Yes, I want to delete this. There we go, force delete and boom, there we go. We don't have it anymore. Now, with that said, there's another thing that we want to delete. This will be under characters, mannequins, and then we want to delete this animations. And that's because we will import our own animations, which I will be leaving in the description. But don't worry, we'll do that later. But for now, let's delete this. So this will also contain the animation blueprints, which once again, we will create our own. So let's go back to the mannequins folder, select animations, and just press delete. And force delete. And now we are good to go. So we have everything set up to now work. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is create a new game mode because we basically deleted the default one. So let's go ahead and go to the content folder, right click and create a new folder and call this blueprints. It is very important to have everything in our project organized because so that's why we're going to be, you know, making sure that everything is in the right folder from the beginning. So let's go ahead and right click and create a new blueprint class. And in this case, it will be a game mode. So let's select game mode base, which will be more targeted towards single player games. And let's just name this something as GM for game mode underscore. And then just, you know, whatever, like single player in this case. Let's open up this game mode. And as you can see, we have all of the classes here. By default, this will work. The only thing that we need to change is 
the uh, default pawn class, which is basically the player blueprint. Right now, we still haven't created, so we cannot change this, but that's what we need to do uh, later on. Okay, so now anyway, let's go ahead and apply this game mode to this test level. So let's go to world settings and here in game mode, let's select single player. And now let's just go ahead and, you know, save everything with Ctrl Shift S or click save all and let's create the player blueprint. So once again, let's go into our blueprints folder, right click blueprint class and let's select character as well, it will already contain a capsule collider a mesh and so on which is what we need so let's select character name this something as pp underscore player and let's open this blueprint up as you can see it will already have some components as i just mentioned the capsule component the mesh and the character movement component so in this case let's select the mesh and on the mesh asset let's find in many simple now this will be temporary because later on it will change it to be our meta human all right, so let's place this correctly. Let's go ahead and put minus 89 on the Z axis here in location and minus 90 on the rotation. So we'll be, you know, looking in the correct uh, way. With that said, let's go ahead and compile and save. And now we can assign that player blueprint to our game mode. So let's go ahead and open up the single player game mode. As you can see, it opened up in this compact way. We can just click full uh, blueprint editor and we have it the same way as before, just in case. And let's in here in default pawn class select BP player. With that said, we can go ahead and close that tab and we are back in our blueprint. But if we press play, as you can see, we are kind of inside of our player. If we press F8 to eject, you can see that it has been created in the you know player start. So that's working, but you know, we need to create some more things as a camera. So let's go into the player, select the capsule component as it is the parent. Just click add component and let's search for a spring arm. This, it will be kind of a attachment, which the camera will be at the end. And then we can just move this spring arm around and it will already have a separation from our player to the camera. So let's go ahead and just, you know, create a camera as a child of this spring arm. So let's select it, search for camera and just press enter. And as you can see, it has applied that camera at the end. So now with this spring arm selected, let's increase a bit the arm length at this pretty close. Maybe 600 will work. And then one thing that we want to make sure is to click use pawn control rotation because later on we want to control this camera. So let's, uh, you know, just leave that enabled. All right, so now we press play, we indeed have the camera. Now maybe it's a bit too far away, so we can put this to be something more controlled. Maybe 300 was actually good. Uh, let's test it. Yeah, I think 300 will work. Um, now, one thing that I want to do is also slightly place uh, the camera a bit to the right, as in GTA. So let's go ahead and select the spring arm. We can just put the angle here, and we can add a socket offset in the Y axis. So we can put it, for example, 20, and it will move a bit. I don't know what, but I think 50 will be a good value, as you can see. Well, actually, maybe that's a bit too much. I think that 25 will actually be better. Let's pull. Yes, this will work. Okay, so cool. So now we have some basic stuff for our player. So let's set the basic input and movement. So let's go into the content folder and just right click, create a new folder, and call this input. And now inside of the input, we can create the uh, action mappings. Okay, so now inside of this input folder, we can just right click, go into the input section, and create a new input mapping context. This will be a collection of all of our inputs. And then we can just add this mapping context into our player and he will be able, you know, able to basically use the input. So let's name this something as YIMC um, underscore just, you know, uh, you know, player input. <laughs> okay, nothing fancy. And now what we can do is add this input mapping collection into our player so he can use it. So let's go to the player blueprint, go to the Venn graph, and now we can delete everything except the begin play. So when the game starts, we will just get the player controller because the input has to be handled by the player controller and then get the enhanced local player subsystem. So this is the new input system that was added in Unreal Engine 5.1 and it is great. So with this system, we can just add the mapping context. 
and in this case the context will be the one that we just created which is player input and now we can just go ahead and use all of the inputs that will be inside but of course right now it is empty so we need to create the individual actions so let's right click go to input and let's create the first input action which will be ia underscore move so if we open up ia move as you can see we have a whole you know bunch of values that we can play around the one that we're interested okay it's going to be on the value type right now it's set as digital boost so on or off but for the movement we want this to be an access to the vector to these so we have a horizontal and vertical um axis so we can go forward backwards left and right so now we can save close this and add this to the input mapping so let's just add a new mapping let's select the ia move and now we can start to add the key binds to this action so in this case the first one will be w so we can search w here for the keyboard and so on but a quicker way is to just click the you know this icon and just press the key on your keyboard with that said we now have added you know one input key into the input action inside of the input mapping context but there's one thing that we need to do because as you can know this is a 2d axis mapping so we need to add a modifier called the social input access value so we will use the y the vertical uh, axis instead of the horizontal so we can move forwards or backwards then we need to add another key which will be s once again we can use that shortcut and in this case it will once again have the sort of uh, switch to input access values because we need the vertical axis and then we also need one which is the negate to invert the access value to go backwards which makes sense with that said we can just close this create a new uh key and this will be a for a what we can do is add this other modifier which is just negate to invert it as by default we are getting the horizontal access so we don't need the social input access um, modifier and now for d we can leave it as it is because by default it will be in the horizontal axis uh positive so to the right so with that said we can save close and now the player can use this input. But of course, we haven't said anything to work with this input. So that's where we need to do now. So let's go to the player blueprint, right click. And now what we can do is uh, just typing the you know input. So IA underscore. And the first one that appears is move because it's really the only one that we have added. So we want this one with the arrow key. And now as you can see, we have this triggered where, you know, it is while it is being you know triggered in this case hold it and then we have this other action value now this is a vector to the structure so we can just right click and split it and now we have those two individual axes as two different values so now what we can do is just use the uh, this add movement input and what we can do is basically you set a world vector direction and the scale value so in this case for the um, first, you know, value or whatever you want to call it, the first uh, horizontal movement, uh, actually vertical movement, uh, we need to get the uh, control rotation, okay? The control rotation, that's kind of the rotation of the actor, but more elaborate, uh, basically of the whole pawn, okay? Not only the actor. And now we can just right click and split this into the different, you know, uh, also axes, so X, Y, and Z. And now from that, what we can do is get the right vector and split this and now we can individually just pass the x and z because we don't want to the you know have the um, pitch being affected and now we can pass that to the world direction so in this case we are getting the right vector of our player so we can move left or right and in this case we want to go ahead and plug in the x value and now you will see that i can go ahead and move to the right and also to the left so that's working now we need to do exactly the same but forwards and backwards so once again let's add some movement input node and we're gonna copy this control rotation node and then we want to get this time 
the forward vector because we want to go forwards and then with the negate modifier backwards. So we can just split this once again, plug in the X row and Z over here. We don't want the peach. And now you just plug that to the wall direction and also plug in the value which we receive from the input action. And now I can move forwards, backwards, right and left. So everything is going ahead and working, which is what we want. Now we need to do one more thing and of course is to turn our camera. So let's create a new input action. Just right click input action IA underscore and then this will be something I just look. Once again, let's open up this input action and we have to change the value type from a bool from on and off to a vector to the so we can you know move our camera up down left and right just as we did with the player so now with that said let's go and open up our um imc player input and we can just just you know hide this i move thing and just add a new one which in this case will be the look so now here we can add a new uh you know uh key into it in this case this will be the mouse and now we have a you know different options and we want to add the mouse x y to the axis and this will just get you know the values of the mouse which is what we want in a 2d way so we now said we can just go back to the player uh, blueprint and just you know, use the new um ia look input action and right click split it to have the individual axis and then just use the add controller your input as you can see yaw on here is on the z-axis so that's you know why we are uh, using the yaw is how in real calls it and now we can just plug in the i believe this will just be the x and then we need to add the controller in this case the uh, pitch for up and down which will be the y and now you will see uh, also make sure in the spring arm that use control uh, rotation is enabled very important that we can go ahead and look around now for uh, going um, looking up and down it is in, actually inverted so this will be basically the pitch if we disconnect the pitch as you can see now we cannot look up and down so the thing that we can do is just get the value of the y and times it by minus one to just invert it in a very quick way and now the movement should be great so that's working we can turn around move around and everything just works but of course our player is kind of just you know very frozen so what we need to do is add some cool animations so let's go ahead and do that okay but firstly before you know making the animations let's make that the character will face on the direction that he's going because we are not aiming for this straight movement we want the gta movement which will basically go in the direction that we are going so let's go back to the blueprint we can close also the collection Select the character movement component, go down, and now you will see this orient rotation to movement. That's what we want to tick. And now basically it will, you know, make uh, the character face the direction that it's going, which is what we want. Also another thing, let's select the class defaults and search for yaw, and let's disable use controller rotation yaw, because that was basically making the character always basically turn uh, looking forward. And that's not what we want anymore. Okay, so with that said, as you can see now, indeed, he will be looking where we are going because we checked that box in the character movement component. Alright, so now this is looking, you know, each time closer to the player controller. So what we need to do now is add the animations. So let's go to the content folder, go to characters, right click, new folder, and this will basically be animations. So now let's open this animations folder and what you have to do is download the animations that I will leave in the description and we just need to grab this you know FBXs all together and drag them into the content browser and now with that said first of all let's click reset to default just in case you previously touched anything to make sure that the options are correct and now let's select the skeleton which will be SK mannequin now very important make sure to not select the old SK mannequin skeleton for Unreal Engine 4. We want the new one for Unreal Engine 5, so it is just SK Mannequin. Alright, so now with that said, let's click Import All. And there we go, we have the animation. So let's go ahead and save everything. And just, you know, we can take a look and oh, they look awesome. Haha, <laughs> cool. So anyway, with that said, now what we need to do is create 
an animation blend space. So what is an animation blend space? Well, let's check it out. Let's right click, go into animation, go into legacy, and let's create a blend space 1D because it will be in only one direction. So let's select this, select the skeleton, which will be the SK mannequin once again. And now let's go at the start of the name and just put this the um, idle jog blend space 1D. Let's open this up. Okay, so in the blend space, what we can do is transition between animations depending on a value. In this case, the value will be the speed. So as the speed of the character increases, we will transition from the idle animation from being stationary to walking to then jogging, basically pretty much running. So we can do this very easily using this blend space in this kind of timeline. So let's open up this axis settings for the horizontal axis and we can put a name. In this case, the value will be speed. The minimum speed will be zero, but the maximum speed will be 500, which is how fast our character will be able to go. Now make sure to match this with this maximum speed in the player blueprint. So let's select the character movement and go down to max box speed and let's decrease it from 600 to 500, which is a bit better. Compile, go back here, and now we're good to go. So let's find our idle animation, which is this one, drag it, and put it all to the left, where, you know, the speed is zero, as you can see. Then let's find the jog animation, which is jogging, drag it, and put it all to the right, where the speed is 500. If I now hover over this timeline and hold control, as you can see, at the speed increases, if we can preview this, the transition will happen from idle to jogging, which is really cool. All right, so now with that said, we can close this, save this, close this, and we can finally create the animation blueprint, which is where all the logic will go to, you know, find out what animations we have to play. So let's right click, go to animation, blueprint, and once again, let's select the skeleton what we want to work on, which is SK Mannequin, create, ABP underscore and this will be just you know character Let's open up this animation blueprint as you can see we have this an in graph which we can put things into the output post Which is what we will see so let's make it very simple use right now and drag in the idle jog blend space 1d Which is the blend space that we created so we can just plug that into the result and when we compile as you can see We can see the idle animation plane now this will all depend on this speed value. So if I were to put this on 500 and to compile, as you can see, now this is running. But of course, we need to find out what the player uh, in-game speed is by a variable. So let's set this back to zero, okay? And let's right click and create a new variable, which will be speed. So now what we need to do is update this speed to whatever character speed he actually has when he plays the game. So to add that logic, let's go to the event graph and you can see here we have the event blueprint update animation. So this is the update. This will happen every frame and it will just be repeating and repeating constantly. So this is the try get pawn owner. So this node will get the owner, the blueprint, the pawn. So we can just from that get the velocity and this will give us a vector. To make it simpler, we can just use the vector length node which is this one which will convert it from a vector to a float and now we can use this to plug in our speed so we're basically in each frame of the game getting the owner's velocity and plugging that to the speed and now that will work so if we go back to the animation blueprint animation blueprint now just the player blueprint in general go to the viewport select the mesh and go and put in the anim class that we just created, which is ABP character. You can see that now he has the idle animation. And now if I press play and I move, you can see that the jog animation is playing. And then when I stop, boom, it stops. So that is going ahead and working, which is already looking very, very, very cool. Now it is looking pretty cool, but an extra thing that we need to do is add a little stop animation when we stop moving so we will get that gta like effect of fluid movement where he just kind of stops uh, in a more you know realistic way let's say so that's where we have this stop animation that we imported as you can see it just stops now let me recut a bit because 
it lasts a bit too long at the end here. So what we can do is find the ending point, which will be around here when he puts the final foot around in frame, you know, uh, point 0.51 here. We can just right click and go to remove from frame 17 to 21. And now we'll just get the, you know, section that we need of the animation to be more accurate. Now we can close that, go back to the uh, content browser, and we can just go back into the animation blueprint. So in here, we're gonna go to the name graph, and we have it very simple right now. We just have a variable that will be filling in the speed and passing that to the animation blend space, and then just that to the output post. So what we need to do is make it a bit more elaborate, because now we will need states. So we will need a state where we are on idle and then a state where we are you know from idle to jogging and walking over whatever and then we will need another state which will be stop so for that let's right click and create a state machine so let's select this state machine so we can rename it and this just will be called locomotion because it is what it is let's place it up here select the two nodes here Press Ctrl X to cut it. Let's go inside of this, dragging a new state, and this will be idle. Okay, with that idle created, let's right click at another state, and this will be walk slash jog. And now inside of that, we will add the blend space. So let's go ahead and paste this. And now we can just drag an arrow to make a transition. Now in idle, what we need to do is dragging the idle animation itself, connect it, and make sure, very important, to enable loop animation so it will loop. Okay, so now with that said, what we need to do is make sure to transition only if the speed is greater to whatever. So what we can do is double click on this icon, get the speed, and be like, hey, is this bigger than, well, zero? So if we are actually moving, if so, we can transition to that. Now we want to add another state, which will basically be the stop animation, right? So let's name it stop, enter, drag in the stop animation. And we of course don't need to put loop in this time. And on the transition, well, this will be if the speed is basically less than, let's put something as 0.5 to have a bigger, uh, you know, kind of boundary. So if it's less than, well, let's put 0.3 to be a bit more accurate. Uh, we will go back to the stop animation. Cool. And now we can just do one last transition back to idle, but this will not have any type of rule. So we can just go ahead and click this automatic rule based on sequence. So as soon as the stop animation finishes uh, playing, it would directly go to idle without any problem. Okay. So now we have this created. So what we need to do is drag it here and we can use it. So let's go ahead and just press play and you'll see that there will not be any difference but when I stop, boom, it plays that stop animation which is really cool as you can see. And of course you can play around with transitions to get a more accurate and realistic looking transition. So we can click this one, change maybe from mode to cubic and put it to be at, I don't know, 0.3 of duration and then at the end, also put it at cubic and put maybe 0.4 as duration so it would be a bit longer. You can go ahead and, you know, play around with that to get a more realistic uh, effect. But this looks pretty cool. All right, so now that we have that set up, there's one last thing that we're going to be doing for this tutorial. And that's the head look at Boopman. So we will get that GTA looking character. So let's go ahead and do so. Okay, so for this, we will be using control rig. So first of all, let's make sure that the plugin is imported, which it should be, you know, automatically imported with 5.3, but let's double check. So let's search for control rig and of course say this, you know, just to make sure. Okay, so now what we need to do is right click, go into animation, control rig and create a new control rig. This will be called something as CR underscore head look. And now let's open up this. Okay, so basically what we need to do is first of all import the skeleton that we want to use and work on. In this case is of course the mannequin. So let's go to rig hierarchy 
and click import hierarchy. And now we just need to select a mesh, which will be many simple. Click OK. And there we go. Now we have all of the bones. So what we need to do is basically add an offset for, well, some bones, which will be the upper spine, the neck and the head. So we can use the offset transform node and we have some things. First of all, make sure that the type is bone because that's what we want to go ahead and move around. Then we need to pick up which bone we want. Like I said, we are beginning with the spine 5 to have a bit of the upper body movement too for the shoulders and then work our way up to the head. So let's search for spine 05 and then we can expand the offset transform and there we go, we have this rotation pin here, which we will fill in. But for now, let's go ahead and create a variable because, well, we need to plug in what rotation we're going to be using. As you can see, this is a quaternion, so that's what we need to do. So we could create a variable from here or go to my blueprint and create a new variable from here, whatever you prefer, and name this, you know, rotation or just head rotation, whatever you want. In this case, rotation will work and we need to set the type to be quaternion, which is a type of, you know, rotation. Let's just drag that, connect that to rotation and we're good to go. But like I mentioned before, we are not only doing this for the spine, but also for the next zero one, zero two and head. So let's select those two nodes, just copy and paste them. And now for the second one, this will be the neck zero one, paste the next one. This will be neck zero two. And then one last one, which will be the head. And with that, we are good to go. Now we are basically getting the information from a variable, which is the rotation and applying an offset for, you know, the upper kind of shoulder, body, neck, head stuff. Now we need to make sure that we can access this variable. So let's select it and click this eye icon to make it instance editable so we can, you know, edit it from outside. And also let's make sure to expose it on spawn. This is just making sure that we can see it from outside and we can change this rotation variable. All right, so now with that said, we have everything done in the control rig side, but we need to do some things in the animation blueprint. So the first thing I need to do is add the control rig to the player. So let's go to the locomotion graph. So let's go to the basic, uh, uh, you know, parent animation graph from the you know output post and everything. And let's go ahead and add a control rig node. Now, of course, this has to be after our locomotion same machine because it will apply things and, you know, it would override our rotation for the neck and so on. So now with the control rig selected, we can go down and select a control rig class. In this way, in this case, it will be the head look one that we created. And as you can see now, because we exposed the variable, we can see it here. So we can just click use pin and it will appear here. So let's right click and promote this variable. Um, and now it will be like head rotation, right? And we can just leave it here. So now we need to, of course, apply what head rotation we want to, you know, use in the control rig. So we're going to go back to the events graph where, you know, we set everything up and let's go ahead and, you know, do everything. So the first thing I want to do is get the pawn owner. OK, so we can get whatever is the player blueprint and get the uh, control rotation. OK, so where it is looking at and so on. And then on top of that, I want to get the capsule component rotation because it might be different. Now, we still don't have access to the capsule components. Well, why? Well, you don't have access to the player uh, class. So let's go ahead and add a new node, which is the uh, event blueprint initialize animation, which is pretty much like a begin play where the game starts, or in this case, where the animation blueprint starts. And let's just cast to what? Well, the player blueprint. And what we can do is just save this in a variable, which will be, you know, um, player character, if I know how to type, blueprint. And now with that, we can use this one down here to get the components, which will be the um, capsule. And it is at the bottom. There we go, capsule component. And then we just want to get the world uh, rotation, okay? Because it's on the world um, rotation, not locally. So with that said, now we can just use this delta rotator 
Okay, and we can use go ahead and plug in both of them and we can just right click and split this into different values. And now what we can do is get the first one, which is the X roll and make some clamping because of course we don't want our neck to be able to rotate, uh, you know, 180 degrees around and break our neck. So let's go ahead and divide this by minus five and uh, go ahead and use this clamp float node. So here we can put some values in this case, I guess that around minus 20 and 20 will work. Let's go ahead and plug that there. And this will be for the X row axis. Uh, now let's copy and paste this, okay, and connect for the Y pitch. And you see that I have, you know, kind of, you know, put them around, like this one could be down here, so it will be more organized. Well, the thing is that later on, we need to join them into a rotator and the axes are all messed around. So that's why I'm moving this one up because actually they will kind of be uh, switched, okay? Anyway, so we want the same values and just paste it also uh, for the Z. Also, if you're wondering how I am aligning nodes, you can select both and press Q on your keyboard and you can just align them, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, anyway, well now with that said, okay, we have uh, the clamping done, so we cannot break our neck, okay? <laughs> and we need to do this re interp node. So first of all, let's create a new rotation, okay? And this will be the kind of the spine rotation in general. And this will not be a quaternion this time. This will just be a normal rotator, okay? Great. So now all we can do is drag this and do a re interp two. And this will basically make a nice smooth interpolation, a transition. So our neck will not be like snapping, it will be like smoothed out. So it will be with a bit of delay looking realistic like in UTA. So once again, right click, split, plug in the different values. Now that they're clamped and organized, okay, uh, because they are, you know, kind of changed of the axis. And then at the end, what we want to do is basically update the spine rotation with the new one after the transition has happened. Now let's plug that here, put this here. And now the last thing that we need to do is convert that spine rotation to our um, head rotation quaternion so the control rig can use it. So for that, what we're going to do is right click and once again split it so we have the different axes. And we want to make a rotator because once again, guess what we want to uh, change and switch the um, basically the vectors so drag in the make vector node okay uh, sorry <laughs> vector make rotator node okay and now we just want to get the x1 and plug it to the z okay so double click to make a reroute put it up so it's organized then the y will go to the y and then lastly z will go to the x double click add a pin, put it to the uh, button here so it will be organized. And now we can just cannot change the X and Z. <sighs> okay, now there's one last thing that we need to do and is to get the head rotation, okay, and set it. And the cool thing is that Unreal Engine will automatically detect that is a, uh, you know, different type of node and we can just convert it. There we go, nice and easy. And before we continue, I basically missed a very important thing, which is the delta time and the interpolation speed. The delta time will be basically just one, and the interpolation speed will be how quick you want uh, the smoothing to happen and the head rotation. In this case, let's try point one. It should be pretty good. So now if we go ahead and press play, you can see that now, oh my God, <laughs> you can see that it works. We are turning the head and a bit of the shoulders to be looking where we are. And also we look back, we get this really cool effect like in GTA. So everything is going ahead and working and it looks absolutely amazing, which is insane. So that's it guys. If you found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel. Remember that you have full access to the project files on Patreon and YouTube members. Join my Discord server if you want to talk with me and other devs about the series and share your work. Also check out my new course with Game Dev TV on how to make a stealth game in Unreal Engine. And follow me on my socials. And now yes, with all that said, bye bye.